Good afternoon, YouTube. My name is Matt Popovich, and as you can tell from the title of this video, today I'm going to be going over how to install the resynthesizer plugin for GIMP on Mac. It's it doesn't work when you immediately install it, but there's a pretty simple solution to it. I spent way too much time one Sunday trying to build GIMP from source and rebuild this plugin from source. None of that's necessary. There's a very easy solution that Werner Eugster found, and today I'll be going over how to do his solution and actually use this plugin to be able to remove, automatically remove a section from an image. Let's go. All right, for starters, we'll want to go to GIMP.org and download GIMP. Scroll down here to install GIMP directly. This will download an installer. And I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to cancel this download. I have it here on my desktop, so I'll open that up. A little double click action. And we just drag GIMP into our applications. And that's how you install GIMP. Alright, so now that we have GIMP installed, let's open it. You can open it by going to Spotlight and just typing in GIMP, and that will open it from the Applications folder. Once it loads, you can check and see what version you're on. I'm running version 2.10.22. And once we install this resynthesizer plugin, we'll be able to see it in the under filters and then enhance. And there will be a heal selection filter here that we can select. Currently, the resynthesizer plugin is not installed, so we don't see it. So to install it, Let's go to A Ferrero 2707's GitHub. He has a repo called GIMP Plugins Collection, and GIMP is originally built for Linux, so all of these plugins here are also built for Linux, and I believe he sort of rebuilt them for Mac somehow. The one we're looking for is the Resynthesizer plugin. We can download it with this Resynth Resynthesizer plugin dot tgz. Once that is downloaded, we can then extract that archive and open it up. So it's just a bunch of Python files. And what we need to do is we need to copy these into the plugin folder that GIMP has. So to do that, we need to find out where that plugin folder is. Let's go over here to GIMP and then go to preferences. We can then scroll down and expand the folders to the plugins. Now these are the two locations you can paste these plugins to. It's a lot easier to just paste them into this slash applications one. And to open that up, we can click on this little icon here that will show the location in file manager. Click on that. And this is where we need to paste everything. We can go into here in the plugins folder. These are all the available plugins. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag and drop everything from the resynthesizer repo that we just downloaded and paste them into there. Cool. We can then close this folder, close that folder, click OK. And just for good measure, let's quit GIMP, Command Q. And then we can open GIMP back up. I got to spotlight there quickly by pressing command and space. So GIMP just reloaded all of our plugins and we can now go to filters, enhance, and there it is, the hill selection plugin. Now it's not gonna work yet, but let's go through if we were trying to use this, what would happen? So we can just drag in an image here of something that we want to remove um, an object from. And yeah, you can convert it to the color profile that GIMP wants. And I will maximize this guy. So in our scenario, we have this hooligan that's sending it off of this cliff. And if we want to say remove this hooligan from this otherwise great picture of nature, we can go to our lasso tool up here. I don't know if it's called lasso, it's called free select. And we can then zoom in 
and to do that you'll hold command and move your mouse wheel if you only have a trackpad you can't actually pinch to zoom in GIMP just do hold command and then with two fingers you can sort of move move them up to scroll out and move them down to scroll in um, so here's our hooligan oh boy didn't mean to do that press escape and I'll undo that to to select him we can just roughly pan around the edges here ideally you want to do this a little more carefully than I am but we're just doing a quick example here alright so our hooligan is highlighted and to automatically remove him with this resynthesizer tool we'll go up to filters enhance and heal selection and GIMP will pull up this little window here with a couple selections we'll leave them as default click OK and we get an error and this is very common from all of the resynthesizer plugin tutorials that I've watched so to fix these errors what we need to do is it's a a little bit tricky we need to make a symbolic link to basically trick the plugin it's looking for a newer library that we don't have so we will basically point this plugin to the older library that we do have and the older library is enough where it will still work so to do that we need to open up terminal again we can go to spotlight type in terminal and from here we'll need to go into a certain location to actually make this symbolic link and as I mentioned earlier Werner Eugster he wrote this up in a great little blog post of what we need to do this is our issue the plugin resynthesizer is not found for use and what we need to do is we need to go to this location we need to change directory to user local lib so we can copy this command and then paste that into our little terminal so we are now in user local lib and then we need to run this uh, symbolic link command now before you do this you should probably check that that file is available so let's list all of our lib intl files Do I not have this? It was at this point when I realized this quick 10 minute tutorial was going to become a fiasco. As my father would say, it's, it's always something. On my other Mac, I had this library and it was as easy as making the symbolic link, then restarting GIMP and the resynthesizer plugin worked. You can do that if you have that option and can skip this next section where we obtain that library. But if you don't have this library, as I did not because I was running on a Mac with a cleanish install. You can obtain that library with a few commands. First you'll need to have brew. You can find out if you have brew just by running brew. If you don't have it, you can find installation instructions from brew.sh. Next, we'll need to run brew update. It does take brew update a, a little bit to run. It took me about eight minutes, but once that finishes, I like to just run update again. Sometimes these programs can have multiple dependencies and running update multiple times can, can help things. So let's run it again. And looks like we need to first run this command here to get us a non-shallow clone of homebrew. So let's do that. We have now fetched a non-shallow version of homebrew, so we can now successfully run brew update. And I don't think we need to run brew upgrade again, but we can give it a try just in case. So, oh, oh, nope, yep, we got things to do. All right, and this brew upgrade is gonna take about another 10 minutes or so. So whenever you run these brew commands, maybe, I don't know, call your mom, call your dad, call your friends, go brew a cup of coffee. Oh, 
Maybe that's why they call it brew. Get yourself a, a nice cold brew, maybe a little cerveza action while you wait. But the good news is brew has finally finished as darkness has fallen upon us. But if we go back into user local lib and we can run an ls for lib intl, put a little asterisk after that so that we can show any file that matches that sort of string and bingo we have lib intl.8 which is what we are going to use to run the resynthesizer resynthesizer is looking for a dot nine but we have dot eight so pulling up Werner Euxter's tutorial here we need to make this symbolic link that will point lib intl 9 to lib intl 8 we'll run that and we can then see we have 0.9 available and that's the major key to get this to work major key alert. so what we can do is we can then go back to GIMP we see our jabroni here is still highlighted so we can now go into filters and then enhance and then heal selection and again we can keep these parameters in default and yeah it's saying we have some errors if you've already selected the area and you don't want to lose that you can save what you're working on so I'll save mine here into my downloads and then I will quit GIMP and I'm going to exit out of, of all these windows as well just to clean things up a little bit okay and now we can open up GIMP again and we can open our recent project there this .xcf I believe that is a GIMP extension. There's our little jabroni. And we go to filters, enhance, heal selection, keep our parameters the same. We will synthesize correctly and pa pow. Now all we have is Nietzsche. Look at all this Nietzsche here. Not too often do you get all this neatness in one location. That's called nature. And the jabroni is gone. We can press R to go to the rectangular select just to undo that selection. And we can zoom in. And yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. That looks looks really good for, for an automatic tool to do. Now if all of that seems like a lot of work to you, we can just open up this image again in GIMP and we don't really even have to use this resynthesizer tool um, we we can use the clone or the heal tool and they work just about as good so let's go over here to the clone tool I guess first let's start with the heal tool what the heal tool does is you can select an area by holding command and clicking and then that is the area that you are pulling from to heal the selection that you make. And the heal tool does a lot of blending. So this really, one strike through here, and it, it really just blends the, the area. And you'll notice that right here, as you move it, your selection moves as well. So you know, down there I'm copying the, the green snowboard, actually, and, and doing some healing with that. Obviously that's not what you want. So you know, you'd want to re-click and, and do this again, but you can see a lot of smudging going on there, and that, that's good for certain certain circumstances. Um, in, in other circumstances, you just want to pull directly from here and sort of just completely erase this section. So let me get us back to the original image here, and let's do the clone tool. So say we want to get this area, and what it does is it really doesn't do any smudging. 
It's you're you're really just copying and pasting, cutting and pasting from from one area to another. And you know, you're gonna want to select sort of an area where it it, it matches where you're you're trying to paste from. Um, obviously, I'm not doing a, a great a great job at it right now. Um, you could, you know, in an ideal scenario, you'd you'd want to maybe change some of this this hardness over here, and and really do some more blending there. I guess I changed it the wrong way. Maybe not. I don't know what I'm doing. What am I in the clone tool? I'm in the clone tool. I was talking about the heel tool. All right. So that was a a pretty bad example of of what you know this tool can do. But ideally, in this scenario, I'd probably grab the clone tool and start to do some do some pasting at the very beginning here, and then probably towards the end, I would try and grab more of the heel tool to, to do some blending. Now keep in mind, I am a very much an, an amateur in, in this realm here. So yeah, we go back over to the heel tool, grab this area, do some more blending around here, blah, blah, blah. Try and get rid of some of these darker spots. Cool, cool. Let me switch back over to the clone tool. I just pressed C. Um, so like the clone tool is really good for like an area like this, where you sort of want to duplicate this tree. So we can go to the clone tool, make this guy a little bit smaller, and you're, you're sort of just pasting tree on top of tree. Something, something like that. Yeah, it doesn't look great, but you, you get the idea. And we'll do some some more racing of the snowboard here, and there you go. So, not terrible, but you know you can you can play around with that and get some some pretty decent results, similar to the resynthesizer tool using the the heel selection. So, there you go. That's how you can install the resynthesizer tool. And additionally, if you couldn't get that installed because of, you know, whatever reason, just too many downloads or too much time or it looked like it was too confusing, you can just use the heel or the clone tool and get pretty similar results manually. That's a wrap. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.